welcome to floss tube <laughs> i'm possibly a little hoarse my tea is probably too hot i'll give it a go i've been talking all day i've been recording all day so i apologize if the voice gives out of me and i apologize in advance for not having a where are we now april and not having a march floss tube um i've just put some lip balm on but i don't think it's got fully absorbable bits sophie got into it so she's mangled it <laughs> so uh, there's there it is there's a little kind of i don't know bead of balm <laughs> don't know i'll try and keep my hands clean for my stuff I've got lots to show you and then i don't feel like i've made much progress on other things so yes hmm see how I go um now I did just do a video so some of these are fairly recent for me um whereas they're not recent for you um what I will do in respect to these is send you to the video um which will be out in the future so if you're interested in these cross stitch magazines I'll probably go out to YouTube um by the end of April, usually on a weekend. I've put these two videos actually into the same one because they're so old um, and I will timestamp one of them. So you've got the World of Cross Stitching, which I think is the better magazine of the two, and then the Cross Stitcher magazine. The Cross Stitcher magazine is the October issue and the World of Cross Stitching magazine is 301 Christmas issue. Um, the Cross Stitching magazine gave you these little cupcake kits and cards the cards are actually behind the ada there and they were really really cute and dinky and then the um other one that gave you tinkly bell and it gave you the deer kit and noel or no um yeah so there was those two um my favorite as I say, was the cross stitching magazine. There were some really, really cute kits in here. I'll try and very quickly show you my absolute favorites. This was one. This is actually the um, finished kit. This is Christmas pudding and it's got all the recipe and everything else there in the back stitch and the cross stitch. And it's just awesome. Really, really cool. And it just does not translate if you are a diamond painter. Um, at all it, it just doesn't have the detail you'd have to have huge huge pictures there was all these greeting cards so happy kwanzaa happy diwali day um happy thanksgiving winter solstice blessings uh wishing you happiness and prosperity chinese new year and happy hanukkah so there was all these little patterns in there as well um which was really cool to make it so much more inclusive there are these i mean look it's Santa and a gnome or an elf and a Santa and a snowman and a reindeer and a penguin. That's so cute! Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm a sucker for cute. And the backstitching is just like backstitching. See? Look how cute that is. I mean, the detail is really cool. And you can see on those little gold things there, they actually cut out the um, even weave in between those stitching. Um, Jurian Jones is just showing off now for bangs but look at that she converted a photo of the jack russell into a painting there's durian and her bangs anyway um she converted the jack russell from the paint from the photo isn't that cool she's really talented um if you want enabling go check her out on her etsy store there was an awesome doorstop gnome there's this. How cool is he? But look at the detail in the toadstool there. The shading is just amazing, amazing, amazing. And look, you know, there's hands around the toadstool and there's details in the schnoz, the nose and all that kind of stuff. You can make it flat cross stitch or you can add a fluffy beard and then you can cross stitch the button nose and, or it's not a button nose. You can cross stitch the nose and then stuff it full of stuffing and stick it on the front. So he really becomes 3D. It was so cool. There were the first cards, not really into those. These were so cool. There's 41 patterns in here for snowy kind of scenes. They were amazing. 
like really really cool some stuff in there um yeah very very cool so there's a little bit of them so down the bottom snowman there's snowbody like you boom tish um the cat eating snowflakes i mean who doesn't have and the little kid all trussed up like a turkey with this little puppy really cool really really cool some designs in there were really good um what else there was a lamp lamp post that was pretty good reminded me of both narnia and dublin city that lamp post there we have lamp posts like that up around christchurch in the city center well west of the city center um uh silent night which wasn't any flash i think that was it really there's a christmas box kind of decoration oh and there was a tree angel if you're into angels on the tree so was that um did i see anything in this that was worth mentioning um not really i don't think there was anything to write home about in that the alphabet was kind of cool in um autumn there was a pin cushion no no oh the halloween thing was kind of cool hang on let me find that the halloween 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 was Spellbinding Projects 24. Okay, so this comes on an A3 spread, and that's it there. Halloween, the date, all those spells, all the details, all the bits. That was that was kind of cool. If you're interested in any of the patterns I have rapidly flicked through, go check them out in more detail in my other video when it comes out. And um if there is something in particular that you did like, that you can't get your hands on the magazine, please contact me because I'm quite happy to um, cut up the magazine um, and send you the pattern in the mail. All right, um, might as well start from the beginning, top, which I'm sorry, it's all going to be out of whack. This is my wool. This is my knitting, sorry, not my, my wool. This is my knitting project. I do this in the car. And I try and only do this in the car. And the progress is really, really cool. I've put it into a linen bag now because the balls can actually um, sit on the bag and not go flying off my legs. Um, I do usually wear a skirt going to work. But there is my knitting. Um, and I will get me out of the way so you can see it. So you've got your Pico start here, which is the little balls. Then there was some knit stitch, then there was some stocking, and then there was a couple of contrasting lines. Then we started into this, and I must have had a glitch here because this is a bit of a dog leg. I must have forgotten to decrease or something. Anyway, loved this stitch here that carried up. Um, and now I'm onto this bit. Now I don't think I've done all of it correctly. This funky line through there, but it is supposed to be this marled look between the green and the red, and it will be changing to the next ball, which is also predominantly green. I think I've already got it in here. There we go. You're to add three, I think. Add ball three. Yeah, replace the red with the green. So it's going to become all green, a bit more bluey. Um, because this is, you know, almost gone. And I have weighed this. The last time I weighed it it was 15 grams, but it is looking about halfway soon. So there's that. It's not bad for I haven't got a clue what I'm doing, kind of thing. I am knitting to the chart. Um, it actually gives you a breakdown of the bits. So you've got the chart there, but it gives you a breakdown of what these bits are. So it actually reads reasonably easily, um, you know, for something that's, you know, looks complicated. I didn't know if I had done it quite right when I started, but it's consistently wrong if it's wrong. So yeah, I just fold that up and then it goes in my project bag. And yeah, as I 
sink. That's my car project. Um, more yarny stuff. I might have to dig a bit deeper for this. <laughs> I don't know why. I haven't checked it. I haven't had a chance to check it. I basically got four balls of these wool in the February knit break. So I'll show you. They're all the same. But it's Cam by Audine Wools. It's 80% um, wool, 10% silk and 10% mohair. It's gorgeous and soft. It's a double knit weight. Um, and as I say, I've got four of those now and I will be able to make something out of it. The pattern it actually gives you is for a cowl um you know a really chunky scarf so um i don't know if i'll do that because i've got the four balls but you know it would have taken two maybe but it, four is a much more substantial project so i may do that something a bit different so hmm i literally again just opened that this morning so um it's a little bit fresh in the head now um, more yarn. I found out, I don't know who told me about this. Maybe it was just following Mothy and the Squid. She, Mothy and the Squid does a Patreon subscription. It's not cheap. It is English, but it is a hank of hand dyed wool. I will probably do it for maybe three months and that's it. But look at these little extras that she's thrown in. She's thrown in the poison frog. She's thrown in the little key ring kind of needle minder, stitch minder with a little, that's a rubber frog, so it's squishy. Um, this, okay, it's a bit dinky, you know, but it's a poison frog, just keeping with the theme. She's quite wacky, um, the designer. I can't think of her name. She's given you the details of the poison frog on the back of photograph paper, so it's a proper photo. And it is called Strawberry Poison Dart Frog. It's 75 merino, 25 nylon. It's a superwash treated. It's a 100 gram skein and it's a 4 to 5 mil needle. It's a sports weight. Um, I think it's fairly thin. But look at the colours. Aren't they gorgeous? And I have no idea what I'm going to use these for. And, you know, that's okay. But, like I say, it is only a short term thing. It is really stupidly expensive. Oh, I did have another one. I had a package. I don't know where it's gone. Um, hello again. Sorry. I found the box that I was talking about that went missing. So this is from Mothy and the Squid. This is one of my month's um, Patreon supporter thing. Gift. Um, so this is how it's come for me. I think I did an unboxing properly on the last one, but this one's going to have to just join in in the floss tube. So, what have, what have we? Holy cow. Oh, it's orange for an orangutan. Oh, But, but, what the? She gives these gifts to... And she did actually say that she was going all out this year for her Patreon things. Um, I don't know that she's necessarily only doing endangered animals or anything like that. Oh my goodness. Look at this stitch minder. It's a little orangutan. That's so cool. And she's put it on her card, which is cool. Um, but it's heavy. It's metal. And look, it's even got the other side. That's some lovely bit of detail. Um, there is a picture of a baby. Um, so again, it's photographic paper and then she's got the blurb on the back. Orangutans are um, native to the forests of Borneo and Sumatra. Um, oh, he's so soft. They spend a large time, part of their lives in trees and they are well adapted for climbing and suspension. All species are critically endangered. Their diet is primarily fruit. They also consume leaves, bark, honey, eggs and insects. So soft. Um, most of the day is spent feeding, resting, and traveling. While ev when evening arrives, they build nests to sleep in overnight. Orangutans are among the most intelligent primates. They can cooperate, plan ahead in coordination with one another, communicate about things which are not present, and keep track of reciprocity. Re reciprocity. Repre in their relationships. 
They use tools to communicate, leaves to amplify their vocalizations, and in acquiring food, for example, seed extraction or fishing. Separate groups are, have different cultural use of tools, which they pass on, and individuals will retain useful tools for future use. Um, if you want to see orangutans in action, well, the, Jane Goodall did a lot of the gorilla work, but um, you've got the Clint Eastwood movies where you've got the orangutan. Um, it has a height of up to 1.4 meters. It's got weight up to 100 kilos. Okay. Uh, top speed, top speed, 2.7 mile an hour. That ain't fast. Uh, lifespan in the wild, up to 60 years, they're critically endangered. Oh, that is so cute. And that is a Zappy toy, Zappy plush. It's so soft. The jowls are movable. Oh my god, that's, I'm just going to keep petting it. It's really, really soft. Um, it doesn't seem to want to sit terribly well but they they have got the jowls they've got the nose even that it's really cool but even the face is really soft it's my kids have had their heads shaved um aj in particular he had his head shaved at one point to i don't know a three or something and his head fell like this i kept on stroking his head it was so soft and fluffy that's what that feels like it's it's so soft and fluffy it's like stroking a hamster these are gorgeous these are really, really cute. So this is the kind of thing that you would just... I haven't even looked at the yarn yet. Oh my God. <laughs> These are the kind of things that you get from Mothy and the Squid if you want to join her Patreon. It is expensive. I don't... I'm not going to be doing it for um, much longer. But how cool is that? So this one is Orangutan. Um, it doesn't say which month... No, it doesn't say which month this one is. I think this is March, though. Um, so she's shipped this out super, super fast. Um, February took forever to get to me, which was the poison frog. And this one's got here, like, literally on the back of February. Um, you stupid mail system. Um, so I think I'm going to... Well, I've or paid for April because it goes out in the beginning of the month. So I think I will give it a wrap at April. Although I had paid in January... Um, I missed out on the January shipment. Um, it's orange. I have no idea what I would do with that. But look at the speckle. She's done some pretty good work. Now apparently it takes 16 twists to get it into the hank. She's got a video. I can't think of her name. I feel very rude. Um, she does 16 twirls. She's got these videos on Instagram. It's funny as all hell. She is really hilarious. Um... And she has the most idyllic spot in the world in the UK, Scotland, um, that she takes pictures of as well. So you get to see a bit of her world and, um, you know, her craziness. But yeah, she um, she's twisting the hanks or she's doing weights with the yarn and it's just, she's just crazy. It's a 75% um, merino, 25 nylon, superwash treated, 100 gram skein and it's a 4 to 5 um, needle. You only do get the one hang, so it is for fairly small projects if you were to do that. So that's kind of why I'm not liking. I love her work, but the conversion to Australian and it's only one hank, it's like, yeah, no. I'm not going to keep it up, but yeah, um, it was great doing it for a couple of months. Um, and look, she really does throw in these extras. I mean, they are really nice. Yeah, for me, being international, yeah, while it's nice, I think I <laughs> almost want the second hank. Um, it's just so I can make a bigger project. But orange, yeah, it's not my colour, so I don't know what I'm going to do with that, seriously. And the orange is coming up more yellow on the camera. That's way more orange. Orange, let me try it there. Um, it's much more navel orange orange than the yellow that it's showing. But, you know, how cute is the orangutan? And you get a bit of the story of the animals behind the inspiration and she very much gets her inspiration from nature um, you can see on her Instagram she's posting a pic of the flowers and then the hank of the wool that's echoing in the flowers and all that kind of thing so it's, it's really really good um, I really like her philosophy I really like um, how um, approachable she has been when I messaged her um, I love her Instagram presence and stuff and her yarn colours are just amazing so yeah 
de definitely different bright different vibrant um yeah i mean look at this this look she's got the the rainbow hanks you're not gonna get the neutral boring kind of you know hide in the grass kind of colors you're gonna get the bang pow you know um poison arrow frog and orangutan orange and <laughs> i don't know what's next <laughs> it's really cool so yeah all right back to the video bye Oh, this is what I needed to do. I needed to get the orange off the camera because it was having a spaz. That looks a bit more real. Box 23 from Darn Good Yarn. Um, was a little bit light on this month, to be honest. Um, it was the teal and gold, and I did do an unboxing separately. And um, I did have somebody say they didn't particularly like the colours, and that's fine. Um, but there was a cool key ring that came with it. I uh, haven't put it on my keys yet. But, you know, um, I have actually got the tassel on my keyring and I th and there's a heart, heart or a yarn of wool with knitting needles sticking out of it. I have them on my keyrings as well. So this actually makes this weird ass lacy kind of shawlette, wouldn't keep a polar bear warm. It was just holes. It was like fishnet tights on your back. Wasn't gone on that one. So there's that. Okay. I got floss for the Outlander cell. Yes, you're into floss stuff because I don't know where that other box has gone. And I might have to just slice it in. Anyway, this is the Outlander cell. It's rather boring, but I did buy all the floss for it. There's a lot of brown in the border. And then there's these colors thrown in too. I wasn't sure what it was going to look like, but it is the Outlander Sal and, sorry, not to be confused with the Sassanac Sal. So I got the floss from Itchy Stitchy, so that was pretty much just like a floss toss. I don't know, um, I don't know what fabric I'm going to be using yet for either of these. If I ever get around to doing this, to be honest. Now this one is the Sassanac Sal. There's a lot more colours in this and they've got things like, um, there's a border around the outside that's got all the people's names. Um, there's wedding rings in the corner and there's Lallybrock and there's some more words. There's another picture. There's standing stones in the centre. That's the floss for it. Like all of the floss for it. Um, so yeah, again, Itchy Stitchy, I asked for the plastic free option. Um, Itchy Stitchy, if you're in Australia, they are the cheapest way for anyone to get yarn, floss, DMC, that I have found. And I need to now catalog all of these into my Stash Cash app. And um, yeah, I'll leave the pattern, my work, till the end. And then there's that. Okay. I'm parched. Oh. I should show you. These came free with the um, knit crate too. But when I pulled this one out, I've got to do some work on this one. The plastic thing came flying off. So I actually have to... Um, work out not only how to get the thing back in so that I can catch it um, but I have to heat seal it so that it doesn't come off again so that was a bit of an oops so there's a little thread thing and if I can get one working I'll be able to give it away um, yeah but there was this from Be Stitch Me this was one of my last lots of wins so again we'll need to add this into my floss my stash cash. These are from when Brandy did dessert, um, dessert fabrics. So there's strawberry shortcake. Oh my god. It's gorgeous. It looks like strawberry shortcake or boysenby ice cream. It's got that kind of buttery, creamy kind of colour through it. And the oranges and the pinks and it's just gorgeous. 
gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And it's on Opalada. It's a, it's a 14 count. Um, I think I might have just nabbed rather than gone for the 16, but I don't can't remember um, how crazy that um, Friday night fight night thing was. And then this cobbler, and it's literally it's that color right through. So it's dark blackberry cobbler kind of look and it's a 16 count opal ada as well i do love the opal it's really really gorgeous and some silks these are weird um these are fifth sorry 20 yards of lotus and 50 yards yes rainbow's gone away and ballet is the pink there is some variegation in that pink but these are silk and you know how yummy are they they're just gorgeous colors and they could work even on the darker deserty kind of things um my bee stitch me and i know i'm racing along i'm conscious of time and how much is in this to be honest so bee stitch me had a purple pouch last month now aussies you can get this um they won't ship internationally but they will ship within tasmania so i got my piece of the puzzle I got my little card saying thanks within Australia. They will ship nationally. They will ship to Australia. There's some magnetic things. They're not very big. So um, I don't know if they're brilliant or not. Handy, maybe. I haven't used them yet um, because I keep on my month haul before dispensing it. So they might be kind of cool. The colours are brilliant though. Um, so there is the keeper thingies. Some Mill Hill beads, some Mill Hill purple beads. As I say, it was a purple bag, so it's all purple. There's Mill Hill beads. Aren't they gorgeous? They're tiny. Oh my God. Some silk, from some pearl silk even. I have never used any of these before, so this was new. It actually reminds me of the string that we used to have when I was a kid. Um, that was more string art and do you see how those colors are different in both cameras so I'm gonna zoom me out a bit okay um, it is more purple than the blue so ignore the overhead camera and it is more purple and that's the purple pearl this is specially dyed for my peoples for my um, sassy pouch this is silks for you this is an Australian company and again it is more purpley than the blue and yes it is custom dyed for the girls and you've seen different colors through each month I think they did a green as well for the frog patch somebody made these little work bags now what I thought was really nifty when I opened this I think the video released last weekend is you can tuck the bottom up and it can stand I think that's pretty nifty. So then you can throw, you can throw in your warts. Throw, chuck, <laughs> yeah, throw in your warts. <laughs> Close it up, and you've got your wart bag. This, again, another handy, nifty little needle pouch, piece of felt in there, purple, and all kinds of cool, and a little snap to keep it secure, which I now can't do. Oh. Go. Um, this was to make a tassel keyring. I don't know if they were suggesting to use the pearl. I'm not going to use the pearl and I'm not going to use the silk, but you could make a tassel pom pom keyring. So it was kind of cool. There's a little piece of mosaic cover reminder. Again, nifty. Some unicorn stabby scissors. Now, somebody actually gave me a note on these. You can use the tweezer tips. Let me get in. So, stabby stabby. These aren't actually that super sharp, but the super sharp needles that you can get, you can put your tweezer tip thing on. Now, of course, that, yeah. Keep your treacherous tweezers covered. They're dangerous too. But you, one of those or um, a drinking straw, plastic drinking straw fits over the end, protects your butt, arms or anything else from getting stabbed by your sharp needles. I thought it was a really, really cool tip. Um, so that was commented by somebody on my YouTube channel from when I opened this and they looked at it. Um, a bit of the theme 
that we had in the purple pouch was Richmond, which is the lolly shop, the little river that I went down and all that kind of jazz. I think this is from the lolly shop and it's purple and orange. It's passion fruit flavor, but it's purple and orange. Purple and orange is the thing for the brown household. Then there was this. Now it looks weird, but. And because I was born in the 60s. Yeah, the hubby's a flower child. <laughs> Look at that! It's a little LED light and tweezers and you can unpick and you can see what you're doing and it stops the button getting pressed in general but it's really bright, it's really, really nifty. Um, now, this bit of fabric was dyed by Melissa and it's purple and it's all kinds of flecked. It is only a fat eighth but it is just a sample and then this I'm not entirely sure how I feel about these. Oops. Um, these are the patterns that are specifically made for um, the group. But this one, I don't know, it just seems to be lacking just a bit. I don't know why. Um, I mean, it looks like a Delph kind of plate, um, you know, tile. And then you've got Tazzy here, but it looks like it might be getting a bit lost. So, yeah, I'm not sure about that one. Um, Padlock Lane Design is the name of the company that did that though. But you get a free pattern, it's part of the sassy thing and maybe it was just the photograph is more lacking in the detail. Oh goodness. Is actually there, you know, on the tile. I don't know. Tile's not really my thing. I guess there's that too. But that was the purple sassy pattern. Um, that video went up last week, so if you're interested in that, ooh. oh my goodness, there we go. What's that? So we'll go sort all this out. There's one stubborn something in there. That magnet was working really well with the scissors. <laughs> All of these bits and pieces. Shut them in. Keep the lollies out. Give them to the hubby and the kid. And there's those. Now, this one, I got some patterns as well. And the thread club. I literally got these today. Oh, sorry, I opened these today. So, are you ready for some cuteness? It's Best Friends by Autumn Lane's Ditchery. I did get a physical pattern because I didn't think that they were going to be releasing this on PDF and then they released it on PDF and I was like, dang it. I do like PDF. But the quality of this, if you are ever in any doubt between buying a physical copy or buying a PDF. Okay, the PDF is brilliant because you can use it on Pattern Keeper. This copy is really good quality print. The outer piece of the card is really good. The pattern inside comes on two A4 sheets, I think. I think it was two A4 sheets inside with the floss list and everything else. Um, it's part of the Moose series that the Expo had at uh, Nashville just recently. And it's just cool. It's really, really cute. And I could not let it go. Kieran, it's been lashing rain all day. I'm sorry, it's the Irish coming out of me now. Um, heartstring samplery, Sunday stitches, um, I thought I had already got one of these, so I may have a double up, um, if I have a double up, I might give it away, well, I probably will give it away, because I don't need to, anyway, there is January, February, and March, so, January is Amazing Grace, Twas Grace hath brought me safe thus far and Grace will lead me home. This is on a picture of this plus fabric. I could do a coffee dye, something or other for that. Um, they're all roughly A4, you know, within A4 kind of range. Um, they are all on kind of heritage style material. They do use um, classic colour works, weak dye works, but there are DMC conversions as well if you're interested inside. Again, the quality of these is really good. You've got the outside cards. Um, so the card 
on the front on the back is the inspiration for the song on the inside then is a couple of pieces of paper printed with the pattern and then on the back is a card again with all the details of pattern and all that kind of jazz so you know good quality kind of things to have as a bit of an heirloomy kind of piece um the old rugged cross i will cling to the old rugged cross of the lines used and some i don't know african violet kind of thing um and yeah um be that my vision was february um down my best thought by day and by night waking on sleeping waking or sleeping sorry yeah that makes more sense the r is maybe a little bit deep uh, waking or sleeping thy presence my light so there's those three now the gorgeous threads that i got um that this is the march club so again I'll fly through these because if you want more details, you can go to the actual Thread Club unboxing, unbagging, un unveloping. So you've got Blue Beatrice. Hang on. Blue Beatrice, which is... Uh, these are nicely variegated, the classic colour works. Um, this is Blue Beadboard. I'm getting a little bit of glare with my white hand. Um, blooming crocus, which is purple lilac. That's kind of cool. Um, blacksmith blue, which is like a really dark blue, bluer than maybe is showing. Actually, what I might do is I, I might lie them down there so that you can see them as they fall. Um, blackbird, which is actually brown, so it's like the mummy bird because mums are brown and the dads are black. And black coffee, which is a brownie. It actually has a bit of blue tint coming through there, but it's a kind of brownie kind of color. So there's classic color works. Um, now, again, I have the Stash Cash app. It's awesome. It keeps all of these cataloged, so I know exactly what I've got in my stash. And I can go to it at any point. Okay, I don't know what the color is. I could put in a vague, please don't. I could put in a vague color saying it's blue, it's brown, it's pink. I need you to go, Sophie, leave it alone. Leave it alone. Um, so I could put in the vague color so I have some idea if I'm looking for a purple color and the name is giving me no clues whatsoever um, that it's in that kind of range, but I haven't yet. I could always go back through and edit that little bit. These are my silks. Overasua, I found, is the actual pronunciation. And if you knew I was pronouncing this wrong, and you didn't tell me, I have words with you. Anyway, my lovely cross-stitch people, she did let me know that I was pronouncing it wrong. So Overasua is the silk. And these are just gorgeous, but they're greens. So they're in 205, 211, 212, 206, and 214. Okay, and they're in those greens and the kind of gabardine green, as I call it. So the, the paler green is up kind of... They don't necessarily go in those orders, but yeah. Um, they're gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I do love the silks. Um, now, these thread clubs will ship internationally. Um, the sassy pouch will not ship internationally, but the thread clubs will. So if you're very keen on getting these in colour order as much as possible... Um, there are some exceptions then please fill out the form the link will be in the google form that's actually attached down in the description um, i will probably pull it up for the floss tubey bit but it's always in my description um, so you can check that out help yes can you get rid of the jack jumper okay Candy apple. How gorgeous is that? Such a vibrant red. That's gorgeous. Weeks Dye Works. Candy apple. Uh, Camellia, which is pink. And there is variegation in these two. Oh, no, sorry. It's classic color works that is a bit more of a solid color. Weeks Dye Works and the sampler from Gentle Arts. They are much more variegated. So Weeks Dye Works, this is a pink. And that is Camellia. So it's like the flower. Ooh, that. Hang on. That's better. There we go. Okay, I'll keep my hand away from the light, maybe. Uh, this one is called Butterbean. 
I think butter beans are kind of green. There we go. Butter beans. So it's green and it's kind of a lemony color. It's really pretty. Ignore Dougal. Cadet green. Green. It is actually quite green. And we've got begonia. Begonia is red. And broom tree, which is green. I don't know what a broom tree is. I know what broom is, but it's not that kind of color. Um, I was kind of thinking of maybe a sagebrush, dust devil, that kind of thing. I don't know. Anyway, that was where my imagination went because these are American companies. So you probably have different color plants than I do here. I do love our Australian brooms though. They actually look like um, snapdragon flowers, but in a bush. They're the same shape flower. So they've got little kind of geeky bits, but they're tiny, tiny, gorgeous colors. They look like fire on a bush. Um, now, the sampler threads from Gentle Art, I have actually been starting to separate these in their collection as well. So the Simply Shakers and then the sampler threads. I'm not quite sure what the two differences are other than they're different. That's all I can tell. Um, so Simply Shaker, this is burlap. It doesn't look anything like a burlap sack. It's kind of green, gold green. Um, there's that. Uh, blackboard, which is actually quite blue, like um, navy blue. Uh, but look, there's green boards out there as well. Um, bubblegum pink reminded me of Hubba Bubba chewing gum. Bubblegum, no, bubblegum, it's very different. You can only blow bubbles with bubblegum. Chewing gum, you chew. If you try chewing bubblegum, you'll get a sore jaw. <laughs> Oh dear. Anyway, you've got the rich pink of the hubba bubba and then you've also got the pale pink of I don't know what. <laughs> uh, this is called Blue Spruce and it reminded me of the Spruce Goose. I don't know why, don't, just ignore me. Anyway, it's a dark green. It is like a spruce evergreen. It's gorgeous, like really seriously beautiful. Um, this blue spruce. Brown bear. Well, I was confusing my bears then as well. Don't ask. Ooh, that's terrible. That looks like baby poo on my front screen. It's actually brown. Yeah, that's better. Um, it is actually brown and a dark brown and it was all kinds of cool. And then there's burnt orange, which, oh, again, bright light. Um, it's orange and a kind of caramel color. It's really, really pretty. Um, it looks like you could eat it. It was yummy. Look, reminded me of what a Jaffa maybe should look like. Um, Jaffa being a chocolate orange. And it would have been a good name for that floss too. But it's an Australian thing. Yes. Jaffa was... Um, oh, I can't remember. You can actually look up how it came about to be named a Jaffa orange. But it was... Sorry. The Jaffa orange is an orange um, variety. So like you've got mandarins, satsuma mandarins and all that kind of thing. A Jaffa orange is a particular orange. Um, just like you've got navel oranges. So, yes. Um, what's that? Alright, so that's my threads. My kid is on steroids. I should just get Smarties and throw them in the air and see what catches. Oh, Lord. Right, I have a finish! Look, 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 look. My nerd is a nerd. Now, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. The only bit I actually really, really like and that I'm nerdy about is the TARDIS. The rest of it I could just leave. But they're cute and it's finished. And look how cute that is. So, if you're a nerd and you really love all four, hit me up in the comments. I may put it in the post to you. Oh lord. It's all kinds of cute though. It was really cute. Justin Freeman designed the cross stitch out of an idea that the group designer from Nerdy Cross Stitch Appreciation Society came up with in the group. 
and she had the idea and her boyfriend fiance Dean drew it and then Justin um, converted it Justin has done some amazing like seriously amazing cross stitch patterns he's done Zelda stuff he does all the kind of fandom stuff he's, and he makes it so that it's um, pattern keeper compatible and it's just amazing so they all collaborated and came up with that pattern and it's done it was a four-parter one a month it was really easy to do um 1500 2000 stitches each letter give or take um yeah really really cool uh clouds factory there is no planet b i'm loving this for its um relative simplicity and ease of doing it and i think i did it in um two days two three two maybe three days there is no planet b and 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 and, and. okay so we've got the okapi we've got the black-footed ferret then we had the rhino and the sea otter i didn't know the sea otter was endangered these are all endangered animals too we have the puffin. I didn't know the Atlantic puffin was endangered. And we have the pangolin, um, which is like an anteater kind of thing. And now this month in April, we have the hammerhead shark and we have the axolotl. And I've only just realized that the body is silver and the legs are pink. And it's really hard to see. But there's a little shimmery body of the belly of the axolotl there. So all kinds of cool. So January, February, March, April. Really, really easy to do. Um, well, this month was easy to do. I battled with this damn rhino and I got the Akapi wrong after six stitches. <laughs> it was like, ah! It can be tricky, but very, very cute. Um, the counting has been fine. The pattern reads on pattern keeper really easily um, it actually hunts out the, the pattern um, so you know where you're heading and you can highlight so it works perfectly with pattern keeper which is awesome um, got my floss part of the kit you can still get this kit you can still get the pattern um, it gets emailed to you once a month to whatever your email on Etsy was and yeah it's brilliant and you get the blurb on what each of the endangered animals are why they're endangered history um, all of that kind of thing really really good project I'm loving it and it it uses um, I think it's picture this plus fabric I might dig out my notebook in a second and um, picture this plus fabric and um, it's just beautiful it's so soft it's gorgeous um, I don't know if I showed you this. I started my head. I'm not convinced, but I may have also done it wrong. That is an eye of one of the weird ass beaky birds or dogs um, in Celtic kind of lettering. Uh, it is 10 stitch, it's 25 count. I'm already wrong somehow on the grid. Like the grid doesn't marry up with the pattern anymore or something weird. I don't know what the hell I've done. And I don't think I did the tent very, um, very well necessarily. I will finish in the eye and see if it's gonna work for me. Otherwise, I've got to get a brand new piece of fabric and start all over again. Um, I don't know if I showed you this. This is from the Black Needle Society and it's just a little notebook that you can put your stitching projects in. It, it is just a plain notebook. But it's got your little marker and it's got a pat stamp. A cross stitch a day keeps the crazy away stitching diary. Um, and it's got the elastic on the outside to keep it closed. Really, really handy. I had already started my notebook when it arrived. So I'll show you that when I get there. Uh, I'm going to keep this one as a surprise for the end. So 
day. Um, progress on oh God. Uh, the steady thread. I, hmm, I haven't done any for the last couple of weeks. I'm not sure what week I stopped on. I need to catch up. Oops. Um, that's just my skid mat. Um, so let's see where we're up to. So I've done all the borders. And you've seen that. And I'll get me out of the way. She's so hyper. She hasn't had any chocolate. I hope. I didn't give her any chocolate anyway. Uh, that's upside down. The red is at the top. I know. It's important. Okay. So. There. Ugh. Are we there yet? Alright. Give or take. There's nothing in the bottom anyway. They're empty. Okay, um, so I've done, I don't know, up to week 12. I probably have four weeks to catch up on. It is reasonably easy to do. Um, so what I've been doing is any of the stems are done in charcoal, which is the black from Bee Stitch Me. Um, we've got tulips, I think, over here. Um, I can't remember what they were called. Fuchsia, chrysanthemums. Uh, I can't remember what that was. That was lavender. Um, Cosmos, I think was that one. Foxglove, um, hops, and strawberry was this one. Now, I think I went wrong on the strawberry. I'm like, I had a major oops on that, but it worked out. So, yeah, all of my stems are in the black, and all of my flower colors are in the color. I didn't do the hops in green because it would have been lost. I could have maybe picked a yellowy kind of green, but I am actually using much more variegated stuff. So I've picked flower colored floss. So this is all variegated. So I just kept going. Um, so you can see how the variegation is coming out in the, each of those flowers, like, you know, the different colors. And with the camellia, I think what I, sorry, the chrysanthemum even. What I did with that though is actually used, um, uh, a pale color, a mid color, and a dark color on each of the color range. So that one was an orange, that one's a yellow, and that one's a pink. Um, so I've variegated that one. Um, the fuchsia, I've done the purple front little ends and the pink petals, because that's how fuchsia looks to me. Um, and I've gone for the real colors as much as I could. So that again, with the, um, the lavender, it's a green fluffy head. Um, so I've done the purple on the side and then you can see how it's variegated in the purple, but the um, stems are thing. And this one I did um, pink, orange and purple and again variegated the different bits to get it to kind of pop. So and the strawberries were just um, you get, again color specific. So I've picked the yellow for the center of the strawberry flower and then the red for the strawberry and the white for the leaf of the, sorry, for the petal. So, you know, it kind of looks realistic. As I said, I think I've got about four weeks to catch up on. I don't know why I don't see the notifications. I've got it set on Facebook to see all notifications and either nobody's posting or I'm not seeing it because Facebook algorithms are a pain in the ass. So. I need to keep on top of that one myself. Um, Harry Potter. Ooh, when I went away this weekend, I bought two of these project bags. I um, loved the fabric. I mean, how gorgeous is that? Okay, I think I have an empty project bag over there. I'll show you it, you know, empty. But Harry Potter is in here. And I've sorted all my bits out. And... Oh, Look, I'm proud of my work. I think it looks amazing. Somebody, ooh, let me give you a hot tip. Somebody actually came to the stitching group the other week. These are shower curtain rings. Shower curtain rings? Do they look familiar? You can pop it open. And you can put your floss on it. How freaking cool an idea is that? Seriously. So simple. She handed out two to everyone, but because I had a bag next to me on one side and my stuff in front of me, I ended up with two lots. So I've got four hooks. How cool! Shower hooks. Shower rings. Seriously. Now, I don't know how I'm going to show you this. Um, I'm back to the blinking envelopes. But, 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 but. Major, major progress. 
So, um, I did the, I know, spoilers. <laughs> I'm so mean. I did the Howler down at the Sunday Bitch and Stitch, which we don't bitch, but anyway. <laughs> I did this down at the, the day and I finished that complete Howler in three hours, four, four hours. Yeah, it's a fair bit of work. And it's actually one stitch too narrow. Who cares? I don't. Um, and then I'm filling in the rest of the envelopes. I bailed on the envelopes. Seriously, I was jack of the envelopes. So I went to chapter one. Oh my gosh, this was so fun. I had, I don't know, three weeks because everything was finished super, super early in March. I had three weeks to work on this baby. Look! I have fully finished chapter one. Now I have changed the bejesus out of this. So the sorting hat is not in Stuart's pattern. The crest is actually down here. The banner is actually further down. So I've shortened it here in the G than it would have been on Stuart's pattern. Um, this all worked. It's full coverage with orange and red it really it does work on the camera and they are little circles and i did a stitch with me three weeks ago two weeks ago maybe i did a stitch with me where i actually stitched the one of the colors i can't remember which but all i had to do was fill in so i didn't have to think and i still made mistakes and i had to go back and fix it but it's fine and the little lion i got from etsy I think I bought the pattern. It actually has the little line that's hanging on a balloon string and then there's a letter up here, L. I think you can personalise it. Um, it was cute as all hell, but all I needed was the lion. I could not find a cute lion. Um, Rachel spoilt me. Holy cow, she's so hyper. Rachel spoilt me with her Slytherin snake, which is now no longer available. We have tried hunting the snake down. The snake is gone. She is the only person I know with the snake. It's funny as. Anyway, the designer has changed it and the designer has also... What on earth? I knew I was missing a magnet. I have no idea where I was missing it from. Anyway, the scissors can go... Get, yeah, anyway. Um, so yeah, the, um, the snake went... We tried looking for it because somebody said, Oh, where did you get such and such? And... I said, oh, well, Rachel's actually got the best Slytherin snake I've seen. It's, you know, it's got a scarf around its neck and it's just cute. It's just really, really cute. It was gorgeous. And if I was a Slytherin, yeah, I'd snap it up in a heartbeat, but I'm not. So I didn't. Because, um, you know, I'm not a Slytherin. It's just oh, the, the way it is. So um, there's my Frogger, too. If you haven't seen a Frogger before, it's a, that's my Frogger pin. It's a little frog. Because, you know, I wanted to be a bit literal. Um, from Misty, by the way. Um, 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 so, yeah. Um, she couldn't find it. We looked all over the designer's page and they were gone. And I don't know if she's releasing them. I don't know if the person has inquired with the designer um, for their pattern. Um, yeah. So cute. So, so cute. Um, so there was that. And my Peppermint Purple, another project that I sadly have not caught up on. Uh, I don't know how many weeks I'm behind on that either. Maybe three. Maybe three. Um, but again, these are shorter projects. I, I think I've just been blitzing, oops, blitzing away. What did I drop? figure it out. I don't know what I dropped. As long as it's not floss. No. No, I really don't know. Anyway. Um, oh no, that's the Blackwork B. No, I haven't done anything on that. I had the hexagons. You saw that last time. I haven't done anything on that. Where is my cutting and cutting? It's buried in the bottom. Mm. I have this bag that lives next to me. Oops. 
swear this keyboard just... Ah! My scissors. Don't lose my scissors. These are such good scissors. These are my little... These are just AliExpress scissors. But very, very handy. I actually sit on them. Slide it under my thigh, but at least I know it's not going to stab me because it's got the cover. This is again done with the Peppermint Purple kit from Claire in the UK. This is my own fabric. This is Through the Stones, I think. Be stitched me. The card is in there somewhere. Yeah, there it is. Through the Stones, uh, Fat Quarter, Ada, 14 count. I did the garden theme and I'm up to whatever week that is, so 12 possibly, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, yeah 12, so, oh jeez, can you deal with her, she nose dived off the couch onto her head, No, she really didn't. She just dug a hole in the floor. Wow. You okay? You need your head back. All better now? You okay? Can you stop with the cushions near the table, which is too close to the couch? We're having pizza tonight, are we? Yeah. Did you take the roast out? Yeah. Oh, playing a game today, we? <laughs> no, we're not playing a game. <laughs> Alright, recording. How are you? One would wonder. Anyway, I. She took a nose dive off the couch. Or a head dive. Anyway, um, so yeah, I'm probably two weeks at least, maybe three behind they come out on a wednesday i think it was just too tired from full days of work or something so i've got to catch up with those as well now these ones i am actually doing the colors that are dictated by claire except for the garden border i did my own thing there but i did use colors in this border that are all throughout the project so this purple here is one of these i don't know which one the cherry red kind of thing is maybe that color the pink is you know to come Potentially the green is, you know, they're all in here, so it's not going to clash. Um, but what I am doing is I'm pulling, so week one was one color and then week two was this one. And I used that thread in this block in those little rounds in the inner. And then I used the color set for the week in there. And then I took that purple from week two into week three. Similar kind of thing, week three into week four. Um, and so on and so forth. Now one of these was actually the same color the same week. Um, and then here was a bit of a oops because I forgot to change or no I changed the color too early and shouldn't have um, These are some of the so the colors are so similar you probably would blink and you miss that there's a different color in there same with That might be the same anyway because it doesn't look like there's any change. This one's just got the red um, From that week I think it went to that one something like that Um so they're close, they're not necessarily right next to each other. And then, I don't know, these little bits in the middle are different from the rest of the outside. So there's a subtle kind of difference, and that was my aim, was, you know, some of them are going to be more kind of obvious, so that pink there is very different, that purple there is very different, and that one stands out a bit more. But some of them are going to be much more subtle um, as we go through the colours. And yeah, the kit is the cold four colours. And... I think I used charcoal. Charcoal or... No, 310. I did use 310 for the border. Um, so yeah, I need to catch up on that and catch up on the botanicals. Um, Harry Potter will be going this time next year. <laughs> I've got plenty of time. Um, if I can do it a year behind, oh, I'm doing well. Okay, now, are you ready for this? The pièce de résistance, but I haven't finished it yet. It's still early in the month. The Dark Queen of the Sea. My hag or harlot. You ready? 
so there she be um ursula in all her finery so month one which was um september or october were hugh dewey and louis my three fish okay month two were her hips and coral kind of bit month three was her bust and arms month four was her hair i think yeah i think it was her hair i decided to go with the purple uh, sorry her face was also included i think in the hair yeah so this is where it started changing no sorry the bust is where it first started changing so i put the bustier on her and um the alternate was to have her with her tits hanging out basically um now in month three i actually did this in single strand one over one i actually went back over it recently and did full crosses i think it looks better um it's a bit more kind of uniform my crosses were terrible like my one over one is not good um so we had a choice with her hair we could go purple or we could go blue purple being cassandra and blue being leslie's twist and you may remember i had these skunk stripes in already i might not have had that one in but what i ended up doing i put in a blue streak over here and it didn't work so i took out the blue put back in the purple and put in an extra skunk streak just on top here and i might have done here as well you'd have to look back through my other pictures or something on instagram so she's much more uniform the skunk is doing what it's meant to be doing um and then the next month was a was the ink and this is where petite treasure braid came in first so it actually does shimmer and shine the even though this is a moving picture um it's not really picking up the shimmer and shine um the next month then was really small like march was tiny it was the coral antlers the crown which again that's petite treasure braid i actually did um the called for yellow and the petite treasure braid gold and i did c310 for the back stitching black um this is as called for in the corners to make it a bit more art deco and then this month april is the trident and coral so there's more coral to go in clearly um and i haven't finished the trident yet so the trident comes down you know a fair chunk there is going to be a squid tentacle crossing over holding onto the trident and there's much more coral i think it goes that away goes over to this side a bit more and that doesn't go further than that so you see where that edge of coral is there that's the border for the picture so it elongates down um so yeah i've got the um mix of petite treasure braid and 743 i think it is here um i've taken my coral strings across so i've ha i've parked them off to the side i've got to try and remember which one was which um because they're continuing on the left and on the right but i needed a cross reference with another color so there is my ursula she's looking awesome i'm loving doing it um it's now the 11th it is taking longer than last month because it's much more stitching i haven't worked out how much more stitching um because i use pattern keeper but it's not pattern keeper compatible so it doesn't highlight the colors um you basically just have to color in each square so when I finish colouring each square, I'll see what the stitch count has been in total and we'll work it out from there. And my bag is broken, so it's bursting at the seams. I might actually put that in my project bag. All right, project bag. This was the other one. Oh yeah, that's why I got it. <laughs> Stupid. <sighs> Dear. Look, it's all seaweedy. So I'm going to put Ursula in here because my bag is bursting. So it's just a Velcro clip. It's lined, it's um, flocked, not flocked. Um, what's the, it's got the 
quilting stuff in at the batting. That one. Um, it's really simple. It, you know, it, it's nothing flash. The material's just gorgeous though, isn't it? Um, all the anemone kind of things. I love the fabric. Um, and you know, it's supporting, well, I actually don't know who made them. Um, I'm not sure which of the girls made these, but one of them did. Um, I do still need to find my fla my fabric to get Michelle to stitch me a project bag because she does them with the clear windows and I really want one of her project bags because her sewing was just amazing. She's been quilting for years, so she's, yeah, she's a pro. Um, I don't know if this is one of hers, but the stitching is really, mm, it's, pretty, it's pretty good. The, um, the border is right near the edge, um, but of course, um, no, it's just, it's, it's just really nice. Um, they don't, they didn't colour match. They did white on the outside. They could have done blue on the inside. Um, but no, I think they sewed the outside. So no, that's why they did blue and um, white. Because they stitched this bit up as well. Nothing fancy. No extra pockets or anything. Um, so yeah, Ursula will go in here. Um, so that was a project bag that I saw locally, bought locally. So yeah, that's that. I think I'm done. If I find... Oh, this was something else. Um, on my whip and chat, I think I say Tyco drums. On my whip and chat, um, a couple of weeks ago, my son was playing in the Tyco drums for part of Harmony Week, which is the, you know, international racial, um, harmony, um, learning each other's culture. So there was some Indian, Hindi dancers before the Tyco drums came on. Um, they were giving these bags away for free. It's, it's just an even weave. It's got the um, stamp, not stamp, iron thingy on. Okay, it's got a lot of crap on the back. Hobart, respect all, blah, blah, blah. Kind of thing. You know, that's that's no biggie. But look at how pretty this was. It was gorgeous. And to have it as a craft bag, it was like, yes, please. <laughs> so, that, yeah, this was free. They were giving away free magnets and everything else. So, yeah, I grabbed one of those and filmed my son playing Tyco. Um, taiko drums, Japanese drums, all arms and movements and all kinds of cool. Um, ooh, this was something I got recently too. How gorgeous is this? This is an Australian wildflower sampler and it's got all the flowers. So you've got appleberry, you've got a bower plant which kind of looks like a bottle brush. Um, You've got banksia, or maybe that's the bower plant, and that's the that is the banksia. Um, Christmas bells, which I think are also called naked ladies. They might not be the same as naked ladies. They might be something else, but anyway, they look similar. You've got these little trumpets that come up in the grass in the field. Um, Cooktown orchid. Um, Dampiera, which is a gorgeous little purple thing. Emu bush. You got kangaroo paw. They're fluffy. Um, desert rose. Sweet jasmine. Um, iris. So that's the desert rose there. Iris. Uh, Hakia, whatever that is. It looks like a kind of nut. Uh, groundsel, which in Ireland and the UK, groundsel is actually a weed. Um, but it's it's like a miniature kind of um, dandelion kind of thing. Um, so yeah, groundsel, flannel flowers, which are, they, they may have another name as well, I'm not sure. Um, blue lecan altia, um, marshwort, monkey flower, um, nodding blue lily, which is like an iris, uh, alpine oxylabium, um, parrot bush, which again is like a kangaroo paw kind of thing. White purslane. Uh, Utricularia, which is purple. Uh, tickweed and tufted lily. Uh, Sturt's desert pea. Why is that not focusing for you? That's terrible. Sorry. Um, Ranunculus. Oh, I can't think of what the common name of that one is, but I do know it. Um, a Quandong native pear. Um, viola, warata, which are actually very, very small and delicate. I'm surprised at how small they are. And because my focus is just being a douche, I'm going to stop it. Um, uh, Xantharia, or black boy. Yellow wood sorrel. A yarl. 
um, and Zieria. Um, so that's that. And this is by um, Country Threads. Um, Judy, is it Judy? Fiona? Um, sorry, I'm trying to get her name. Fiona Jude. <laughs> it was both. I have looked at her stuff, I think, on Fox Collection for years. And I've bought some of her kits like these Australiana, kind of the cockatoos or the galas. Galas, as I nickname them. Frogs in boots. I've got some of her patterns or ogled some of her kits in the Fox Collection. But who the hell can afford the Fox Collection's markups? So I never bought them from them. Um, I don't think... So yeah, finally saw this pattern in the store and thought, oh yeah, I'll have one of those. Thanks very much. Um, so how gorgeous is that? Australian flowers. And it's something that if I ever do move back to Europe, I've got something that's a keepsake from Australia. And that was my main aim. I think I've got a map of Australia as well. Like I've got a map of Ireland and it's very much kind of, this is a bit of Ireland and this is a bit of Australia. And if I ever move, um, I've got those. So yeah, there's that. Um, yeah, I think we're done. Have I talked your ears off enough. Have you seen enough goodies? I'm going to be hoarse. Um, so thank you very, very horse much. Horse. Sorry? Horse. Or horse? horse. Oh. I'm tired. I've been recording all day. Well, since 12-ish. Um, mind you, it's now six. So six hours recording and talking. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> now it's all the editing to do <laughs> for whenever. Um, if I find the box, I will add it in. I feel like such a dunderhead for having misplaced it now. Um, yeah, and um, I'll show you if there's any more goodies. And yeah, otherwise I will see you around on another floss tube. Remember, I do have all kind of things, flossy, yarny, that kind of thing. Normally on the weekends, diamond painting or whipping chats happen on the midweek. Um, I have done a stitch with me because there are Easter eggs in that and you might want to go check them out because, you know, you might want to check them out. That's all I'm saying. Um, so yeah, there was a knit with me, a stitch with me and there was a diamond paint with me. So um, this, every one of them say Easter egg though. So go check them out if you would like to see what's hidden in the video. Um, yeah, we're done. Okay. Uh, all the links are in the description. If I've missed anything, please ask and I will make sure that you're given the right directions for it. And um, yes, I will see you around on the Flossy Tubes. Um, I'll probably see you next month. Bye for now. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and the rain fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, May God hold you in the palm of his hand.